the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters. But what do we really know about them? And what is their importance in the sky? And what about their mythological family? What's going on over here? Uh, the Seven Sisters of whom? Well, let's take a look at the Pleiades. In this video, I plan to look at the mythological aspect of the Pleiades, also the stellar structure of the stars that constitute the Seven Sisters, along with Mom and Dad. And also, there is a galaxy far beyond the structure of the Pleiades. I plan to look at that galaxy as well. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Hi, I'm Pat Prokop, out here in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. Now, if you like these kind of video, please consider hitting the like button if you really like this video at the end. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And if you really like the video, you can send me a super thanks. I would really like that. But anyway, let's get on to the issue here at hand, the Pleiades. The Pleiades is also known as the Seven Sisters. Now, in Greek mythology, the Titan Atlas married or had relations with Pleione. She was an Oceanid nymph, a daughter of Oceanus and Teeth. Together, they bore a bevy of seven beautiful daughters. Now, the order of birth of the Pleiades sisters is, and I'll probably butcher the names here as my Greek is not all that good, but here we go. The eldest sister, Maia, the second sister, Electra, the third sister, Tegete, the fourth sister, Silenio, the fifth sister, Alcyone, the sixth sister, Astrorope, and finally, the youngest sister, Merope, or Merope. The mythological story depicts the sisters as they caught the eye of Orion, the giant huntsman. Atlas, being condemned for his battles against the gods, was sentenced to carry the heavens on his shoulders, while Orion the giant continued to pursue his daughters. However, the Greek god Zeus stepped in and transformed the sisters into doves and then into stars to console their father. Even so, Orion the giant is still pursuing the Pleiades sisters across the sky to this day. Nearby, several other half-sisters of the Pleiades, daughters of Atlas and Aethra from an earlier relationship, form the Hyades Cluster. Supposedly, their brother Hyas was killed by a lion in a hunting accident, and the sisters continued to weep of his death. Hence, the relationship of the Hyades with rain. The Pleiades cluster is overall dominated by very hot blue and luminous stars. In comparison, our sun is about 4.3 billion years old and burns with a temperature of around 5,777 degrees Kelvin. That's the absolute temperature scale. At this temperature, from a distance, it would appear as a yellowish color star. Hotter stars appear more in the blue and colder stars in the orange and red. Also, the hotter the star, the expected life is much shorter. In our case, the sun will burn for at least 10 billion years in a steady state form, and then after that as a red giant. The hotter blue stars will never see their billionth birthday, existing for only about 10 to 500 million years. So let's take a look at the seven sisters, along with mom and dad. Now mom, that's Pleione, burns at about 12,000 degrees Kelvin. It is about 391 light years away. Very dim, has a magnitude of only 5.048. Now Atlas, the dad, uh, is burning a little bit hotter at 12,300 degrees Kelvin. It's a little bit further away at 431 light years, but a magnitude of 3.84. So hence that star must be much bigger, must be a blue giant. It's age at about 100 million years. I would expect there wasn't, there isn't much of a future for Atlas. Elcyone uh, burning even hotter yet at 13,000 uh, degrees Kelvin, distance about 444 light years away. Magnitude, very bright, one of the brighter stars of the Pleiades star cluster at 2.85. It's about 70 million years old, a very young blue hot star. Electra, 
one of the hottest stars out there, 14,000 degrees Kelvin, uh, compared again to the sun at 5,777. It's about 370 light years away with a magnitude of 3.7. Uh, it's age about 115 million years. Maya, uh, 12,600 degrees Kelvin, 383 light years away with a magnitude of 3.87. Merope, 14,000 degrees, very hot blue star, about 380 light years away, a magnitude of 4.14. Uh, it's about 100 million years old. Now, this is also associated with the nebula surrounding this star called the Merope Nebula. Now, Tegede, uh, 13,400 degrees Kelvin. Once again, I'm butchering the names, I know. Uh, it's about 409 light years away with a magnitude of 4.3. Uh, Seleno, perhaps the lost sister, 13,200 degrees Kelvin, uh, about 430 light years away with a magnitude very dim, 5.45. Very difficult to see, but even dimmer than that is Asterope, sometimes known as Sterope, uh, at 11,400 degrees Kelvin, one of the cooler stars uh, uh, temperature-wise uh, in the constellation of uh, the Pleiades. And it's not a constellation, it's a, a, a asterism. Anyway, uh, it's uh, magnitude 5.6, it's about 100 million years old. So as you can see, the stars of the Pleiades are burning very hot and really don't have much of a future. As I mentioned earlier, the Hyades, a cluster nearby, part of the uh, relationship to the Seven Sisters, they're half-sisters uh, of the Pleiades. Their distance is much closer. As a matter of fact, it's one of the closest star clusters to the Earth. Its distance is about 153 light years away. And Aldebaran is about 65 light years away, one of the closer red giants to the Earth, but it's not part of the Hyades cluster as it's uh, kind of like photobombing those sisters there. In earlier sessions of imaging the Pleiades, I became aware of a distant galaxy far beyond the nebulosity of the Pleiades, and I call that the far distant galaxy within the Pleiades. And if you want to know more, you can see that link to the video below in the description area. And also, I'll have a link at the very end of this video. But I wanted to see if I can get a better look at that galaxy with the 11-inch Celestron telescope, even though in that past video, I did use this telescope for a bit to get it. But I wanted to get a better picture. And in the process, I did, in my opinion, I did get a better picture of it. But while exploring the image of the higher resolution image that I got from this telescope here, I was amazed at what I found. Let's take a look. Now, one of the main reasons why I was concentrating on the Pleiades star cluster was I was looking for that distant galaxy that's way off in the distance near the tip of the Pleiades. As a matter of fact, it's kind of like close in relationship uh, in the sky to the star Electra, the second sister of the Pleiades. Now, this galaxy is known as the uh, Universal General Catalog 28. 38. There it is right there. You can see it. Now I took this with the uh, Celestron and uh, at F10. I wanted to get a close-up view of this galaxy. And the distance from Earth is, are you ready for this? 316,100,976 light years away. That galaxy is way out there, and I saw it in my own backyard. And you can too with your equipment if you have it set up properly. Now, let's talk a little bit about this galaxy. It is a bit smaller than the Milky Way galaxy. Um, it has uh, the dimensions across about 77 1,500 light years across compared to the uh, Milky Way galaxy is about 100,000 light years across. Uh, the radio velocity is about 5,915 kilometers per second moving away from us. So uh, this galaxy uh, <laughs> to me was fascinating, but something else was even more fascinating. Look at this. As I was looking at this galaxy, I noticed there are other galaxies showing up behind the Pleiades star cluster, and they're all over the place. In this little section alone, look at all the different galaxies 
uh, as I scan across the area. It's mind-boggling that uh, I'm picking up these galaxies, and again, you can too in your own backyard with your own equipment. Um, the, uh, I mean, with with the UGC 2838 being about 316 million light years away, I can't imagine how far these galaxies are away. They have to be beyond 500 million light years away. You know, it's just amazing how many galaxies there are out there. And this one little picture just shows many galaxies. And that's just with my small equipment, and, you know, uh, with the larger, of course, with the James Webb Space Telescope and the Hubble's Telescope and the others, uh, you can see a lot more galaxies. And as we know, there are perhaps a trillion galaxies out there. It's a possibility of a trillion galaxies, and each galaxy contains about a, a 500 billion to a trillion stars. So it's just, just mind-boggling what's out there. So anyway, you know, thanks for watching, and I'm glad. I'm, uh, I, I'm, my mind has just got me babbling here uh, as to the, uh, the total number of stars that we can see up in the sky. So, all right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I was speechless at the end. I mean, it just boggles the mind is how many galaxies are out there. And each galaxy on the average contains a half of trillion stars, some over a trillion stars. And there's billions upon billions and perhaps trillions of galaxies out there. While I'm at it, I'd like to thank all those who have been supporting my channel through their membership, Patreon membership, and by sending super thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And if you want to know more about how to capture the Pleiades or how I captured the Pleiades, watch this video here, The Far Distant Galaxy Beyond the Pleiades. And remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders. And you just saw several of them right here. Uh, all in a backyard or in a sky near you. So unless you need rain or maybe want snow, unless you need rain, clear skies everyone.